Hi everyone, this is Brianne Walsh and we are going to be running through the creating a conceptual diagram in Adobe Illustrator tutorial. So hopefully you are able to print off this PDF and follow along with us. So the first thing you're going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator and once you have Illustrator open you're going to create a new document. So you're going to go to File, New, and this dialog box will open up that allows you to name your new document. So I'm just going to name this Adobe Tutorial. It also gives you the option to choose the number of artboards that you're working with. And so the artboard is the actual art space that you're working within to create the diagram. So anything when you export your diagram, anything that you've included in your artboard, inside your artboard, will export. If you have anything outside of your artboard, that will not show up in your final image. And then this also gives you the option to choose your letter size and then the orientation, whether you do portrait or landscape. So I'm going to choose landscape and just keep this on 8.5 by 11 or um, letter size. It also gives you the option to change your units that you're using and I'm just going to keep this on inches because I like having my ruler in inches on the page. So I'm going to hit OK. So here we go. I have my new document and you can see that my black lines right here are my art space for my artboard. So that's my 8.5 by 11 page. So anything that I keep within this area when I export as a PNG at the end will be within that image. But if I put objects outside they won't export. And you can actually change, once you've chosen the size of your artboard, you're not stuck with 8.5 by 11. If you decide that this is a diagram that's going to be going in a scientific paper and it needs to be column width, you can actually click on this little tool on the left hand side that's the artboard tool and it will open up the size of your artboard and you can change it there. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a shape. So when Illustrator opens, your workspace will have all of your tools on the left hand side of your workspace and then on the right hand side these are all palettes. And so each of these palettes I have just set up to automatically open, but you can also find those by going under Window, and all your palettes appear here. So for if any reason I close out all of these palettes, I can just open them back up under Window. So to create a shape, we're going to use our rectangle tool, which is over here in our toolbar and it's the shape right here and any of these tools that have this black arrow in the corner it means that if you click and hold down there's other options so here for making a shape you can make a rectangle, a rounded rectangle and some other shapes that are already included in the program. So once I select my rectangle tool my cursor is going to change into this crosshatch and so when I click and drag it will draw my rectangle. If I want to draw a square, I just have to hold down shift and it will draw my square. So it will resize this object proportionally by holding down shift. So I'm just going to delete that square and focus on my rectangle. So right now you see that I have this black arrow and that is my selection tool. So up here on my tools there is a selection tool which is this black cursor arrow and then we have a direct selection tool. So if I click on direct selection my cursor changed to that white empty arrow. So the difference between your selection tool and your direct selection tool is that your selection tool can be used to change an entire object. So if I want to change anything about this whole rectangle, that's what I'm going to be using. But if I wanted to change just one piece of the rectangle, so any of these sides or corners, I would want to use my direct selection tool. So when you click onto your rectangle using your selection tool, 
all of these little anchor points appear along the edges and in each of the corners. And if I hover over those, these arrows show up and that allows me to change the size of my rectangle. If I hover over the corner, I can turn my rectangle. So this selection tool is letting me edit this whole rectangle. I can move it around on my page, make it scaled by holding shift down and changing the size, and rotating it. If I can find my rotation. Now say I want to turn this rectangle into a different shape, that's where I want to use my direct selection tool. So you'll see when you select with your direct selection tool, those anchor points on the corners are solid. And if I click on it, I can then pull that anchor point and I can edit the rectangle based on those anchor points. So to undo all of this, I want to go back to my rectangle. We're just going to do Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. And you can undo all the way back to a rectangle that you want to use for the next steps. So undo is Command or Control Z. Now to change the color of the rectangle, we're going to want to use our color palette. So as I said, all of your palettes are under this window toolbar. So if we go into color, we have this drop down menu. So if it's not showing all these options, you need to click on show options. So when you're changing the color of an object, you have two options. You can change the fill, so the color within the rectangle, or the stroke, and that's going to be the line around the rectangle. And you can do this in your color palette. You can also switch between them over here on the side or even up here on your top toolbar. And then you have these color sliders, which based on CMYK values, you can adjust. Or if you know the CMYK value that you want to be changing your object to, you can just type those in over here and it will automatically bring up that color. So I am going to fill this rectangle in with a swatch for my swatch palette. So if we open up our swatch palette, we go to Window, Swatches. And these are swatches that are already preloaded into my Illustrator. So I want to fill the fill of this rectangle in with pink. So I just select that pink and make sure my fill is selected, and there we go. And then I want to put a black stroke around my box, so I'm going to choose that option. So now I have a pink rectangle with a black stroke around the edge. And you can play around with different options. You can remove the fill of the stroke by selecting none but I want to return to my rectangle. So I want this black line around my rectangle to be a thicker black line, and that is going to be using my stroke palette. So we go into Window and open the stroke palette, and you can move these around and line them all up as you want. So the stroke palette is similar to any um, word processing software or PowerPoint when you draw a line, and it's, a, it's the gradient of that line. So here we have the weight. So right now I am one point weight, and I can increase that to make the line thicker. You can also change the corners so that they're rounded. You can turn this into a dashed line. And by changing these dashes and gaps, it will change the appearance of your line. And you have to make sure that you are selecting that object that you want to change.
You can also fill an object with a gradient. And so I'm going to close out of my stroke palette and my color palette and select my box, my rectangle, and open up my gradient palette. So here in this gradient palette, whatever gradient is showing up in this box on the left and clicking on it will activate that gradient within your rectangle. So right now I have this gray to white gradient, black to white gradient, and I want to change this to be yellow to white. So what I have to do is go back to my swatch palette. So you can go to Window Swatches, and if they're all lined up, you can actually just pull and drag it so you can see both at once. And because I want this yellow, I'm going to click on that yellow color and drag it right into this crayon at the bottom of my gradient palette. And so this little green circle with this white plus will show up. And by doing that, it adds the gradient or that color to my gradient. So if I want to add other colors, you just pull and drag. And you can add as many colors as you want. And you can also move these colors along the bottom to adjust the gradient. And I've added too many colors, so I want to get rid of one. So to get rid of a color in your gradient, you just click on that little crayon and drag it down. And it will delete it off your gradient. So to add color, you click and drag onto your gradient. And to remove, you click and drag off. So you can also change the type of gradient. So here we have linear, you can change it to radial. You can change the angle at which your gradient is appearing, which is a little hard to see when it's just yellow. Let me change it to blue. And you can also do this through your gradient tool, which is over on the left in the toolbar. So right here, this little gradient rectangle is your gradient tool, and when you click on it, this line will show up. And if you hover over that, you'll see that your colors on your gradient appear just as the little crayons. And so you can move where you want the gradient to lie. You can also hover over the edge and rotate the gradient. So just like you would change it to 90 degrees on your gradient palette, you can do the same with this tool. So now we're going to start using the Ian Symbol Libraries. So I am going to delete this rectangle. So I want to go back to my selection tool and click on the rectangle and just hit delete. And I'm going to close out my swatch palette. And to access the Ian Symbol Libraries, I'm going to go to Window and go to my Symbol palette. And Adobe Illustrator has several symbol libraries that are preloaded into Illustrator. So that's why some symbols may show up here. But down here, this little icon that looks like books stacked up is your symbol libraries menu. So I'm going to click on that and navigate to my Ian symbols. And I'm going to choose ecosystems because we're going to start this conceptual diagram with a base. And I want a coastal marine ecosystem. So these are all the coastal marine ecosystem bases that are preloaded in the Ian image library. And right now you can see that I have the image of the base as well as the name and you can change that in this little drop down. You can have it just so it shows the image. You can have small text and small images or you can change it to a large list. So right now I am looking for the Watershed 3D Mountains, Rivers, and Dams. So right here. And all of these symbols are listed alphabetically. And if you're in the flora and fauna, those are listed alphabetically by Latin name, so by species name. So to add a symbol to your artboard, all you do is click and drag. So I'm going to minimize my symbol libraries and move those off. 
And just like we did with our rectangle, once you have a diagram base or any object on your artboard, you can move it around by selecting it and using the selection arrow. So I am going to hold down shift and scale my base proportionately and then move it down in my artboard. And so I really like this base, but it doesn't really work exactly with my conceptual diagram that I'm trying to make. I really need to have a coral reef over here underwater. So you can edit this base, and in order to edit the base, you want to highlight the entire thing. You can also select it by drawing a marquee box around, so by clicking and holding. And then I'm going to right click, and this little option called Break Link to Symbol will show up. And I'm going to select that. And the second option for breaking the link, I'm going to undo that is in my symbol palette, there's this little broken chain, and that will break the link to my symbol as well. So anytime that you want to edit any symbol that's already created, you just have to break the link to the symbol. And then because there's so many pieces in this conceptual diagram base, the author has grouped them all together. So you want to ungroup, so you're going to right click, and ungroup each of the pieces. So now you can highlight each of these individually. So to add my coral reef, I'm going to focus on this section right here. So first I'm going to make this sediment a little bit higher in the water column. So to change these endpoints, because I want to change part of an object, I'm going to use my white direct selection tool. So I can actually click directly on this anchor point and pull it so that the sediment becomes a deeper. So you can play around with these anchor points and move them around until you get them the way you want them. So now that I have this sediment looking the way I want it, I'm ready to start adding my coral reef. To do so, you should have a pen tool here on the left in your toolbar. So you're going to select the pen tool, and you can see if you hold and click, there's other options here, but we're going to stick with the pen tool right now. And this, you can just click and draw how you want to put your coral reef base and add anchor points. So once you've got your last anchor point, you can hover over your first anchor point and this little circle will appear and you can close the loop. And then because there's some points in this and it doesn't look very natural, we're going to convert these anchor points to smooth them out. So if I go back to my pen tool and choose anchor point tool, now when I click on an anchor point, I can move it and these two handles will show up. And that allows me to make give them a rounded edge. And you can play with the handles once you choose your anchor points. If you want to remove an anchor point, that's all under your pen tool, delete anchor point tool. You can also add anchor points to an already existing object. So now I want to add a swatch of color to this, this coral reef. I want it to be a limestone color and not just the same brown color as the sediment. So if I go into my swatches palette, and if you've loaded the Ian swatches, there is a folder of fills. And in this folder of fills, there are preloaded swatches that have been created. So there's land fills, land gradients, 
different types of rock and sediment, water, and I'm going to choose limestone to fill my coral reef. And so I also want to get rid of that stroke, so I'm going to choose no stroke in my color, my swatch palette. And now my coral reef is there, but the problem is it's sitting in front of my sediment. So I want to move this coral reef limestone behind the sediment. So just like in PowerPoint, you can change the arrangement, so bring front or send to back. You can also do that in Illustrator, and that is controlled in your layers palette. So every document will have layers, and you can also access this through window and layers. And if I show this arrow, this is every object that I have in my base, and my diagram. So if I click on this limestone, there we have, it's on the top, so it's in front of all the other layers. If I right click on it, and go to arrange, and hit send backward, it will slowly start putting it behind the other layers. Or I can just click on it in my layers palette, and I know that my sediment is this layer, so I can click and drag it behind the sediment. So when you start doing conceptual diagrams that are really complicated, you'll want to keep things organized in layers. So typically, I'll take this first layer and double click and rename it base. And then down here, you can add a new layer and I'll name this Symbols, and I can actually lock this entire base. So when I try to select it, it won't let me. So when I start to add Symbols, I won't accidentally change this base. But you have to make sure that you have whichever layer you want to be working in highlighted, so that when you're adding Symbols, they aren't going into this base layer. You can also turn layers on and off, so if I want to hide all my symbols and work on the base, or hide the base and just look at the symbols, you can turn them on and off. So we're going to start adding some symbols to our base, and the first thing we're going to do is add some crops over here on the landscape. So I'm going to go back to my symbol palette. And in the Ian Symbol Library, I'm going to navigate to Human and Agriculture. And I'm going to choose Field Winter Crop Symbol. And just click and drag it onto my artboard. So I just highlight, click, and drag. And then to scale, I'm going to make this a little smaller so it fits onto my diagram. And just drop it right where I want it on the diagram. If I want to add another, I can just Command or Control C if you're on a PC. Command V and paste. And I can copy and paste instead of just adding new symbols from the symbol library. You can also change the appearance. So if I want this field to be facing the opposite direction, you can trans right click and transform. So reflect. I can choose vertical reflection and it will just swap the appearance of the symbol. You can also, under that transform option, rotate a symbol, scale a symbol. So those are all options. And then I also want to add a tractor. 
So I'm going to scroll down and add tractor number three onto my artboard, and I'm going to scale that so it fits onto my field. So I have my agricultural field ready over here, and then I want to focus on my coral reef. And to zoom in and out on Illustrator, it's Command minus is zoom out, or Control minus if you're on a PC, and Command plus is zoom in, or Control plus if you're on a PC. So we're going to come focus on this coral reef and add some, add a C star to it. So I'm going to go back to my symbol library. and the Ian symbol library and go to fauna and echinoderms. So here I have C star 2 and I'm going to drag that onto my artboard. And so I am actually studying a C star that is yellow and not blue so I'm going to take this symbol and adapt it to fit the color C star that I need to have on my diagram. So I'm going to break the link to the symbol so I'm going to right click and break link and then you can see that both pieces of this C star are grouped together. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. And then I'm going to highlight the C star. I'm going to go back to my gradient palette. And I'm going to change this gradient with my swatches to be a yellow gradient. So we're going to go from yellow to this greenish yellow. So now if we look at my C star, we've made the back of it yellow and we're going to change this other blue to the yellow gradient. There we go. And I will draw a marquee by just clicking and dragging and group this back together. Going object group. And then I am going to make my C star smaller and put it right on top of the coral reef in my diagram. So once you're done adding the symbols to your diagram and you're happy with the symbols that you have and you want to add a legend, you can actually use the text feature in Illustrator. So this is the type tool on the left hand side. And by clicking on the type tool, you can actually draw a text box and that will let you type in text into your diagram. So as long as you have this cursor that is your typing tool, you'll be in the type tool. So if you want to go back to editing your diagram, you need to go back to your selection tool. So now that I am done with this conceptual diagram for the time being, I want to go ahead and save it in my computer. So you want to save a diagram that you're going to come back and edit as an Illustrator file. It will be an editable file in any vector software. So to do that, you just want to do File, Save As. And I'm just going to save right to my desktop as Adobe Tutorial. And save it. And then if you want to save this as an image file, what you're going to do is File Export. So this will give me the option to save as a PNG or a JPEG. So I'm going to save as a PNG and I want to make sure that I am using the artboard. So if I don't select Use Artboard, if you have any images outside your artboard, it will save that whole entire document. So you just want to save to the artboard and export. And then it'll give you options for your resolution and your background color. And you can choose OK. 
So now if I go into my desktop, I can open my image right here. And there we go. So that is a quick introduction to Illustrator and the Ian Symbol Library. So take some time to explore the Ian Symbol Libraries on your own and add some additional symbols to your conceptual diagram and as you're working through your own conceptual diagram if you have any questions feel free to post them on the class forum.